Okay. Okay. So, like I was saying, and I forgot to start recording. Um, the semester is ending in three weeks, right? December eighteenth, that Friday. That's our last day of school. That'll be the end of quarter two. So you have a quarter one, quarter two. Those grades averaged together are your semester one grades. That semester one grade on December eighteenth. That determines whether you get credit for this semester of work or not, right? So you guys need to be aware that that's a reality, right? And a lot of my other classes, it's way bad. Um, and kids are just now starting to realize, like, oh, crap, my grade is terrible. If I don't get it up, that means I'm probably going to have to come to summer school or credit recovery, or I'm just literally not going to get credit. For you guys, I... Some of you are on the borderline for the semester grade. Again, the semester grade is the key one for whether you get credit or not. Not your Q2 grade. That's important, but it's only a part of it. So on power school, you should be able to check Q1, Q2, and S1 grades. That S1 grade is the grade that really matters. Um, the other thing, the tests... Um, unit, what, what's this class? Physics. Unit four, the tests you guys just took, um, those went okay, sort of. Some of you did really well, some of you not so well. Um, they're all on power school, so you should know your grade. We should um, know I didn't cheat. Huh? We should know I didn't cheat. I, yeah, nobody should have, but I, I wouldn't. Yeah. Again, those of you guys that are on quarantine, I gave you the benefit of the doubt and trusted your integrity that you would take the test the same way as you would here. I'm just not there supervising. So I, I better not find out about any cheating. Um, it's not worth your time. It's pointless. It's getting a fake grade so you pass, but then you don't know anything. Um, so I gave you guys the benefit out there. Um, those I got in. Um, if you did it in person, I graded them right away at the beginning of break so that I didn't have to do work over break. Um, they're in. Um, I'm, I just I don't know what to do with them. Yeah, but assuming don't we usually? I'm I'm toying with the idea of like not a retake but a. Wait, did we do that bad? Well. Some of you guys did really well. Some of you did what, I like 50%, you know, like not, not a great grade. Um, and, and that, that impacts your overall grade. Do what the other teachers do. You, get, you fix the problems you did wrong, and then you get half credit back. For the ones you fixed? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. So you can get like, you can get 50% of the points back that you missed. I see. And that that's what I was toying in my you head about doing. percent and then you correct it about 100%, you just go up to 75. Yeah, and I, I think that's what I want to do. Um, and and the, again, the way I graded it, I, it's on the paper ones, like I graded, I, I marked the correct answer, mm. which is a bit of a bummer. However, I can still do that retake option, but you have to show me your work. So if you show me the math that gets the right answer, you show me, okay, you know how to do it, mm -hmm. um, and then I can do that same thing, do like half credit. So if you miss 10 questions, which would be a lot for a 15-question test, and you get, oh, yeah, 15, um, I would give you half those points back so and add it to your current score. So you have 10 out of 15, right? Did we do that last time? Probably. 5 out of 15 originally would be a 10 out of 30. You would make up 10 questions to so get 10 more points. You'd get a 20 out of 30. I wasn't factoring the 30 at all. Yeah, I doubled the scores just to give it a more realistic test value. It doesn't really matter. Ultimately, your test percentage is what gets included. But I just, yeah, I, I just wanted it to be more like a test, have a little more weight than just 15. But it's the same percentage. So that's... What I want to do. Um, when do you want to do that? Let's do it right now. I was just gonna say. I would suggest now. Because if we wait, I'm just gonna forget more. 
Yeah, yeah. which you, should be concerning because the AP test, you're going to have to remember all this stuff. Yeah, but we'll, we'll practice. Do, like, a stupid right. review, though. Yeah, yeah. Also, can you get your mask on, please? Oh, okay. Thank you. Is it possible to get a zero on an AP test? Does anybody know? Well, yeah, you could. Yeah, just do nothing. Well, yeah, just drop your <laughs> So, I think that's what I want to do. It's really hard because my quarantine students, so. Joey, McKay, and Sierra, they all got thrown on quarantine, which is a huge bummer. Um, for them, I might do like, like an average increase um, because I can't like give them their test back right now, which is a pain. Um, if you did your test online on the Google Forms, do you have your answers or have, do you have access to them? I haven't closed mine. Like, I haven't closed that tab. So I can but you submitted so it and you got a grade, right? Yeah, I okay, submitted good. everything, but like, once you're done, it like has a little page where you like, do your results yeah. or whatever. I didn't close that tab because I thought about maybe going through the questions I have left. So mine's still open, so I can't still access my answers. Can you access your answers through Google Classroom? Like, if you go to Google Classroom, because you took it through Google Classroom, can you go to Classroom and click on... It shouldn't let you retake it, but could you? Does it give you the option to view? Yeah, it does. Okay, perfect. So if you took your test, um, so again, this will this will work. Thank you, Brody, for confirming that. If uh, so, Joey, McKay, and Sierra, you guys are going to be watching this video. What I need you to do is um, just like they said. Oh, crap. Oh, I almost had it. I think they all were in person. They were. They were. Um, I'm going to have to. I will probably have to scan your tests and email them to you. You get out a scratch piece of paper and say you missed question three. Write out your correct solution to question three. And then email me back those corrections and I can give you those points. Um, everyone else, I'm going to hand back your test. You're gonna, I'm going to let you use your notes. I'm going to really help you. You can get out your notes, your worksheets, whatever you have. Um, use those tools to redo the questions you missed. You have to show me work because I marked the right answers. I put the Google form. It gives you the right answer. That's worthless right now. You need to show me how you got there. The process is most important. So that's what we're going to do. I mean, like... 20 minutes, 25 minutes. I don't want to spend a lot of time on this, but I want to give you enough to work through this. I think it's something you have to do like on, on your end, uh, just depending on the test, because I have, I've taken tests in Google Forms before. Oh, the, the reason, yeah, the reason is so you couldn't, I was trying to mitigate the opportunity of cheating. Because then you could have said, like, oh, here's the answers. Send them off to Timmy, and Timmy gets an eight. Yeah. That's what, you're right. It shows you you missed questions. Um, so the online people just figure out the right answer? How do I do that? Oh, respondents can see correct answers. Try to refresh it and see if the response page will show you the correct answers. Does it show it now? Okay, so if you took yours on a Google form, I've shown the answers. You can see what you missed and what the right answer is. It'll help. You got to give me, you know, question one. Show me your work on a scratch sheet of paper. That's what you're going to turn into me. If you took the test on paper, do it right here, but just pick a like purple pen or blue, something clear to me that, hey, this is my makeup work, right? Um, you're going to make up the questions you missed. You, sh you have to show me your work. If you show me your work that gets the right answer, which is given, then I can give you those points back. And I'll do that same thing. You guys can earn half of your points back. So if you missed seven questions, 
you can get three and a half points back, assuming you do all the corrections for all of them, which will add seven points to your total score, because I double it, okay? So just do, like, by hand experience? Yeah, like, I want this done, like, within half an hour for sure. Because I have a lot of questions. You have a lot of questions? Um, I can help you a little bit, but again, this is a test. So I need you all to focus right now. We're going to take a, no later than noon. At noon, I'm going to take them all back, and we need to get going on unit five to stay on track. I can help you a little bit, um, but again, not a lot. And, huh? Don't put the corrections on it. If you have a paper copy, you can do it on that test. Just get a different color. Use a blue pen, a green pen, a purple pen. I have crazy colors up here if you don't. I got green, uh, purple. Don't do red because I use red. That's red. That's red. I'm serious. A lot of people are red, green, colored ones. I might very yeah. commonly. Yeah. I'm not. I'm just, just dumb. One. Just grab one and throw one. Does anybody need a pen? I have a question. No, so I didn't check, check my school's email while I was doing the email. So should I do that or? <laughs> Come on. Take a zero. I mean, if you got a zero, we could correct his answer. I can get. Super basic. Yeah. Your email and classroom is the only way I can communicate with you. Um, it's the only way I communicate with students that are on quarantine or whatever. I mean, that, that's... I can't fix any of that. Um, I don't know what to do. Um, what we can do is you can work on it now. Okay. But if you need a little more time, you can do that and maybe come back into my ish. Um, I will give you an exception and let you do that. So why don't you start on that? Um, and then, again, if at noon when we wrap up and move on, if you need more time, you can just pause it and finish it in the issue. Or jot down your answers. That way, if it kicks you out, I can fix, you can figure out what you had written down in case it erases stuff. And yeah. Yeah, if it's a conceptual question that you missed, give me like an explanation of kind of your reasoning or why the correct answer is correct. I'm going to be a little more flexible on those because you're right. You see the right answer. It is what it is. But any, just give me an explanation of like why it's correct. Um, Everything else, it, you need to show your work. Like all those calculations, you need to show those. Oh, yeah. Greens, oranges, purples, and just some other colors. Black is fine. Aiden, did you need one? Or? Yeah, black, orange. As long as it's not red or a pencil, that'll help. Or worse. Does it not? No. Does it purple, maybe? Oh, probably a... I've got to walk in four copies. Oh, there we go. All right, got friction. Friction will open. Universe of gravitation. So I will have to work on it. Again, guys, I want this to be individual, right? This is still a test format. You need to correct your mistakes. I don't want you working with others. Um, 
Oh, open notes, yes, but still individual. Ethan is not a note. All right, so guys, no more talking, please. Um, virtual students, if you're watching this, you're going to skip the next half hour. I'm not going to say anything. Um, I'm going to pick the video up in a half hour, and then we'll continue on. Um, so work on those test corrections. I can't pause and then restart the recording now. It's kind of a bummer.
Do I have a question? I just had a question about business and that was the justification because I forgot that I got my answer in grams and meters and kilograms. That's why I threw the. Okay. I don't know if that was enough of a justification. Yeah. Just, just jot out um, needed kilograms, not grams. Okay. And that's fine. Okay. Yeah. Because otherwise, I would want the full equation again mm -hmm. with correct numbers. But if you let me know why you divided by a thousand, okay. tell me it's going from grams to kilograms. That's fine. Yeah. Okay. I just want to know how much. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Show me the equation and the numbers and then how you got the correct answer. Okay. Yeah. All right, don't just tell me, oh, this was the answer. I know you know that now. Show me the work to get there to prove to me, okay, you do know how to do this now. Then I can give you credit.
This is an experimental procedure that you do to find this principle. So in order to pass, you know, if I was hurting, you know, for instance, you push it and you know the compression distance. You know when it's released, if it leaves the spring, it has a certain pressure. Yeah. So in order for it to have a velocity, but that's energy. How does it So, remember our equation for the potential energy of the spring? It's a unit of x, unit of displacement. That's what you're trying to find. So here it is true about the potential energy of the spring <coughs> and the kinetic energy after it leaves. Using energy to do this to calculate something. Thank you. 
Yeah. 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 Ye
your answer excludes this question. You have no potential. What do you have to look for? A lot. Like all three of these. Like, what do you have to look for? Doesn't this curve have to be the opposite? So it's explaining the energy, the energy is conserved, so the potential energy changes with the energy. So it has to be the exact opposite. You write that out and explain why you think that. I agree with that. Just explain the reasons. Like I said, on the opposite. Yeah, I came across one of those too. I'm like, wow, I, I should have known that. <laughs> Yeah, there's yeah. two, two of them I was like, oh. Man. Like, I reread the question, saw what the answer was, I'm like, oh, I should have <laughs> seen that. Yep. I would have kicked myself. Yeah. I didn't try to trick you guys on these. But. See, and that's, yeah. One of them I thought you were trying to trick me on, and I, like, I overthought it. Yeah. yeah. I mean, in general, in any, any test, you've got to pay attention, read the question, understand what is being asked, and then move forward. I do that. I read too fast and assume things when I miss. No, I didn't like read too fast. Like, I sat there and like I went back and forth. Like on one that I got wrong, I'm not true, 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 false. Hmm. Yeah, the true, false. I put it down true, and then I put down false, and then I put down true, and I put down false. This one right here. I missed it. What's I said? The true, because I was thinking the energy was being like conserved when they worded it like that, and then like I. That last part tricked me. Like, this, sounds, this sounds legit, and then I got to like that last part of the sentence. I'm like, that doesn't sound right. And, and when it said the increases, I thought you were trying right. to trick us by saying like the energy was like disappearing. It, in the system, it was. Yeah, and, that, and that's where I was going to say in, in a system with the key, you can't get yeah. destroy it. Yeah, and that's where I got from you. Which maybe when I was like, maybe when I explained my reasoning, that's what I was trying to say. But I don't know if my reasoning made sense. But gotcha. I just wasn't quite sure. I thought he was saying like the energy was. Like, I guess I misunderstood the N O system part. Okay. That makes any sense. Oh, thank you. Um, okay, so guys, I'm gonna come around and pick these up. Um, I'll I'll try to get them done today because I for John, you get that all my classes deal. are getting yeah you're welcome getting a little swamped. Um, yeah. So I'm gonna try and stay on top of this. Yeah. Where is your? Yeah. Oh oh that's fine. I circled um, the How far did you get? I'm like halfway. Okay. Um, did you record your answers? Because uh, if this kicks you out, I want you to you remember go. the work you've done and then come into the ish. I already requested you. You can take another 20 minutes to finish. Okay. Sure. Um, thank you, Maggie. Um, yeah, if you are, um, took your test online, it should be just a scratch sheet of paper that you'll be given. Um, and I'll, I'll, I'll have to look up your answers, but you didn't think I could go over it. Um, as, uh, there we go. Yeah, otherwise, yeah, cut that inside the text or fold it up. That way I don't separate them on accident. Yours is online. Yeah, thank you. Okay, so everyone got these in? Yeah, I'm 100% going to watch those videos. I will. Um, so again, um, virtual or quarantine students, um, we're video pickup now. We're going to come back to it. Um, again, you guys need to do your test corrections. Um, oh yeah, I also need to. No, um, my virtual students. And. Okay, I'll finish that later. Um, so again, you guys, that unit, guys, okay, that unit was unit four. That was all about energy. The big takeaways from that unit, work. Force, FD cosine theta, right? The force times the distance you apply it is work, which is changing the energy. Positive work means you do, you add energy to whatever you're doing work on. If you do negative work, right, the force and the distance are opposite directions, you're pulling energy out of that system. Uh, in a system, in general, 
Energy is always conserved. The in energy in the universe is always the same. It's just constantly changing. However, when we look in a system, it's conserved if it's a closed system, right? No forces are acting on the system, and there are no masses going in or out. So whatever's in the system has to stay there. It can change, but it has to stay there. That's why some of the questions you could say, oh, the potential energy of the spring is equal to the kinetic energy of the block after it leaves the spring, because energy is conserved. Three main types of energy. There was kinetic, one-half mv squared. That was kinetic energy, the energy of motion. There was gravitational potential energy, mgh. Right? That's the potential energy when you lift things off the ground. It now has a potential to turn into motion and do something. And then there was spring potential energy, one-half kx squared. You need to know how stiff the spring is and how much you compress it to tell you how much energy is stored there. Uh, mechanical energy was the sum of all three. Kinetic, potential, gravity, and potential spring. All of them added together was total mechanical energy. That was conserved in the system unless work was done on the system, meaning you add work, or work the system did work somewhere else. It gave energy away. That was the kind of the big nutshell takeaways for this last unit four about energy. Energy is a big part of the AP test. Um, I still need to figure out, I think I can pin this to the wall, I don't know. Um, again, the AP guide um, energy, that unit is 16 to 24% of the test. So potentially a quarter of the entire test will be about the topics of energy. So it's a big topic, really important. We're definitely going to come back and hit that topic pretty hard um, when we do like that final review for the test at the end of next semester. This next unit, what we're transitioning to, unit five, is momentum. Have anybody, has anybody heard of momentum before? Yeah? Give me, describe what you know of it. Like, tell me what you know of it, how you've heard of it, what you think it is. Random thoughts, just share them out. I don't know if this is the right thing, but... I'm I don't care about right or wrong. Okay. What do you know? I, okay. I, remember, yep. I remember at one point in the middle year, we were talking about, like, a vehicle, like, hitting something. Yeah, and yep. That has to do with momentum, and we'll mm -hmm. talk about that later. That's yeah, know. exactly. I think that my example is, like, smart car right. versus suburban. Suburban wins. Right. Even if the smart car is going twice as fast. Tonka truck versus so, suburban. Versus a smart car. Tonka truck runs. <laughs> Talking like the little dumb trucks. Yeah, I had one of those. Um, it, it, you're right. My comment, I said, oh, that actually has to do with momentum. It also has to do with energy. Momentum in specific, um, momentum is actually almost all about collisions. That's a big part of what we are going to look at. Transfer energy. Right? Yeah, yeah. They're, they're, this momentum, these two objects have momentum when they collide. The we're going to look at how the momentum gets transferred or nullified or added onto each other. We're going to dig into that. So it has to do with like two objects interacting with each other? Yep. Okay. Yep. Yeah, the of the object. yep, it has to do with the motion and the mass. Uh, any other thoughts? Momentum. Where have you, like what context have you heard of it? Uh, Anything. Uh, Aiden. Like, if you're going to look at these things, they have to let them know when you slam on the brakes, you're not going to stop immediately. You know, you're going to go on the curve. Yes, down. yes, you have momentum. It, that's why seatbelts exist. Must be in the tree. Right? You stomp on the brakes and you're stopping your car, but your body still has momentum. That comes from inertia and wants to keep going. But your body specifically, it's got momentum. It, something has to change it. That's, you're right. That's why you don't stop immediately. You keep going. Uh, Evan, you had some? Oh, I was just going to say, like, if you're, like, sledding down a steep hill. Okay. Um, and you won't be able to stop because your momentum is going down. And yeah. Like, nothing's stopping you. Yeah, he's saying sledding down a steep hill, don't, it, you can't stop unless something stops you or you use something to stop. Right? Something, you have momentum, something has to change your momentum to get you to stop. Ethan? 
Was it this class that uh, we talked about how like if you're driving a car like so fast this way and you shoot like a bowling ball the uh, same amount this yeah. way it just stops dead? Yeah. yeah we were the yeah, we're cannon the truck. truck. Yeah, 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 cannon yeah. truck. Yeah, that one gets that fairly is, complicated actually. If you have a cannon on the back and it shoots a bowling ball at the same speed, is it just gonna? If you're moving, it just. It's, yeah. It's a, it's really tricky, especially when you talk about momentum. Because to give that cannonball, like to fire it, you have to give it momentum. The momentum had to come from somewhere. Right. And so it comes from the truck. So it actually, you firing it changes the truck's momentum. You have to calculate and, that. Yeah. I don't actually know the, weird. I don't know the answer. I'm not going to give you one because I don't want to give you a wrong answer. R bring that back up when we eventually get to collisions. Because that's more, more or less what it is. Yeah. Um, it's also about conservation of momentum. Mm -hmm. It's another thing. Conservation is huge in physics. That will still be a thing in momentum. Right? Um, Maybe we should do a demo in the house parking lot. <laughs> Get a tonka truck. Your car versus my car, something like <laughs> yeah, that. My guess is that you probably have the smallest car. So we find uh, we'll get, the we'll smallest get, we'll car. Get, and why would she have the smallest car? Maggie's got the Kia Soul, right? But Kia Soul. oh wait, but I guess Andre also has a Prius. Yeah, so. I got a little Mazda three. We'll My car might we'll be the smallest. Oh, it's not mine. Yeah, Evan. Well, yeah. It's not mine. Yeah. Really quickly. We can get like Andre's car and Q's truck. Okay, so one thing I want to ask you guys to guys to to enter into momentum before we actually explain it. I want to ask you guys a question. Think of baseball, Ooh, right? Yeah. The pitcher. When that pitcher throws the ball, oh, they throw their pitch, they oh, apply a force on that ball, correct? What? Oh, I think it's Newton's third law. I, I, I always forget him if I'm not on top of it. Remember Newton's third law? Uh, what, uh, what was first law? Aiden, you always said it. An object in motion stays in motion unless acted upon by an outside force. Bingo. If an object's in motion, it's going to stay that way until you apply force. It's also going to stay at rest until you apply force. Second law. It's just F, F, F equals MA. Oh, just the equation. It, is it the equal and opposite reaction? No, yes. No, no, no. Equal and opposite reaction. reaction. Not, yeah. When I throw that ball, when I pitch, I'm applying a force on the ball. The ball also applies a force on me. It has inertia that resists. That resistance applies back on my hand. Is that how you throw your shoulder? <laughs> Yeah, kind of. Also, like repeated motion, you wear stuff out. Um, what happens when you throw the ball and the catcher catches the ball? Who who applied more force on the ball? The pitcher to throw it or the catcher to stop it? Give me some. Give me a, an answer, and then your reasoning. The reasoning is key in science. Answers are pointless. I was gonna say Reasoning that. is important. Wait, wait, Brody had something. I was say when the pitcher pitched the ball, he's applying more force onto the ball, which is making its inertia faster, where the catcher has to stop. Uh, the kinetic energy, yeah. yeah. Where the catcher has to stop a uh, higher force from when it started. Okay, gotcha. John, did you have something quick? Uh, I was going to say, like, it takes a lot more force to get something moving. Like, keep it moving so like over time huh. it like slowly starts slowing down so it would as soon as it comes out of his hand it was like it's automatically not as much force as it would have been as it was because it loses energy yeah and so ah, that's an interesting point yeah ethan uh if we're talking about like air resistance doesn't affect the ball then it would be i think the same right because if he puts so much force into the ball and stopping it, he's stopping the same amount of force. Yeah. But I was yelling for Josh, the same thing. Josh, but it, but wait, 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 wait. Josh, what were you going to say? I was going to say the same thing John was going to say is that, uh, well, pretty much the same thing. I'm like, when he throws it, that's going to be a greater force. And by the time it gets all the way down to the. To the right, so I mean, to, because to the catcher. Yeah. Because, it, because the catcher, and it's going to slow down over the period of time due to. 
Uh, gravity, yeah. gravity and air resistance. When gravity has an effect to it a little bit. Gravity wouldn't change its its horizontal. Yeah, it yeah, it, it would. Cause it to yeah. down. Okay, but it, it would reduce total energy, but just reducing that potential. But you're right. Yeah, so That's a great point that you guys are bringing up. If you include air resistance, I would I agree. Yeah. Right? You throw the ball and it's got a velocity. The air it resistance, it causes friction. It's doing negative work. Mm -hmm. Get Catch that? That's super important. We want to, if, if, really. Catch that. Yeah. Oh! Yeah. No pun intended. Yeah. I think I'm funnier when I don't try to be funny. <laughs> it's a general trend in my life. Anyway. Really, what we just talked about work. If you have friction and you throw the ball, friction opposes motion. Force, direction, they're 180 degrees from each other. Cosine of 180 is negative. You get a negative work. Negative work on a system, the ball, pulls energy out. I would agree with you guys. You lose energy as the ball travels. So in real life, the you as the pitcher apply more force. At least more you do more work right that's another thing to remember when the pitcher is holding that ball how much energy does it have it's got a little bit of potential but no kinetic it's motionless then i throw it i do work on the ball and i give it energy now it's in motion you guys just said i lose energy along the way because that friction slows it down it sucks energy out just a little bit so that by the time it hits the catcher's mitt, it's got less velocity, more specifically less kinetic energy than when it left the pitcher's hand. So the catcher doesn't have to do as much work. It, it, it goes from high kinetic energy down to zero. But the kinetic energy right before it hits the glove is less than when it left the pitcher's hand. You're going from zero to like this much kinetic energy. Say 10. Like 10. It loses, say, one joule. Now it's at nine joules of kinetic energy. And then it drops back. And then it hits the glove, and you, you do negative work again. You push back on the ball when it's trying to travel this way, and you bring it back down to zero. You suck all the energy out. That's really good review, not only of our other unit, work. That's, I'm very glad that you guys said that because that's the right way to think scientifically. Like, hmm, are we considering air resistance or not? Because it changes your answer. If you had no air resistance, it's exactly the same. I give it energy, and the energy goes back away. Right, Aiden? Have you heard about the pitcher who split his hand open? He had stitches on like, this part of his hand, Whoa. and he started throwing Burst it, yeah. yeah. It makes sense, nice. right? You're, he's using all those muscles, contracting it, everything, and probably ripped it open. <laughs> that doesn't surprise me. I thought you were saying from his pitch, like his hand was yeah. really normal and fine. He did yeah. yeah. a really hard, yeah. Pitch probably too hard. Probably his through that. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, what I, I want you to... No. I don't. What I want to transition to... you got to ask the ball for consent yeah. before you throw it. Bro, what? What? <laughs> what? Hold on. So, so that You're is a that. guys, guys. Just zoom past. So that was a great review of work and energy. However, what we're going to talk about now is momentum. It's slightly different. Momentum. I want to do at least some of these beginning slides. Oh, this thing shut off on me. Of course. Um, I want to introduce at least momentum and get king. Um, where's my you guys see that? Okay. So Look at these two vehicles. Again, I don't want a right or wrong answer. I want what you know as of right now. Which vehicle has more momentum, do you think? The big one. The truck. The big one. The truck. Anyone think the car? Yeah. Which, which vehicle has more momentum? Definitely the truck. You think the truck? 
I want to say the truck because... Yeah, why? Good. Because it looks like they're going the same speed, but since the Good truck observation. is way heavier than the car, more it takes more, yeah, it takes take more, more work to get, get it up to that speed. More mass? These are great comments. I like these. I feel the you stairs, you yeah. observe, they look like they're at the same speed. Yeah. So speed isn't affecting your answer in this situation. You said more mass. That's a great comment. You said we want the bigger one. It takes more work to get that same energy. I Very love long. those are great answers. Aiden? Uh, <laughs> Look for uh, Lori uh, if you're in the UK. Lori. Second of all, it also like, takes more work to stop like, completely. Yes, like, yes. It stops a lot sooner than our semi-wood. Yeah, because it's easier to stop. Good. Okay. Evan hit the nail on the head. Hey, Momentum yeah. is a function of mass. You guys were describing it. You were saying big, which is correct. Big. Mass is the specific scientific term to describe not necessarily size, but matter. Heaviness, right? Mass. So, that's something we know. If you have more mass, you have more momentum, right? Did I use a Red Rover analogy with you guys? No. no. Maybe I did a tackling. It was like you and, I think, Sierra. Like, who has... Yeah. I thought I did. Like, yeah, Red, you did. You did. Red Rover. Who would you rather send over? Sierra or Brody? Brody. 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 Oh, you wouldn't. Wait, what? When you send someone no. over, you try to stop them. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that's Red Rover. Yeah, it's it's like, run over. yeah. <laughs> the, the reason, yeah, the even if they ran the same speed, just like this example, Brody has a lot more mass than sure? Sierra. He He's going to be harder to stop. A lot harder. So we'd rather send Sierra over because we think that we have a better chance of stopping her than Brody. That's an example of the more mass you have, the more momentum you have. That, that's a, a fact that we need to remember about momentum. Second thing, look at this example. Which car had more momentum? Now, no, what do you notice about the differences in the two cars? Same mass. Same mass. It was the same car. Different speeds, different color. Okay. Maybe the driver was heavier. <laughs> of what we know, same car, different color, but different speed. Who has more momentum? Higher speed. The higher speed. So that green car on the bottom that was going faster. Right? The, this should make sense intuitively. Right? When you're on the, you know, trying to tackle somebody, if you got a lot of momentum and you're you're hauling. You've got a lot of momentum that will let you tackle more effectively. All right? So, another truth about, um, or, I don't like truth in science. Scientifically agreed upon statement. The reason I say that is that there's really not, science is not about absolute truths. We only know what we have evidence to support. Right? We thought the Earth was the center of the universe. That was a scientific fact for years, like decades. I mean, every, every scientist who disagreed was an idiot. Lo and behold, all those idiots were correct. That's why I don't like to talk about scientific truths or facts. We, we have evidence to support claims that we accept as true because we have evidence. So I'm trying to be careful of my words. This is a claim that we accept in science. The more mo velocity that you have, the more momentum you have. So put those two things together. We had a claim that mass, the ma momentum was impacted by the mass. Momentum is also impacted by your velocity. What is the triple line? Uh, is equivalent to. It, it's not equal to. It's not quite. Uh, this also you could think about as proportional to. It's not saying this equals this. It's saying this changes in this way. More mass, more momentum. More velocity, more momentum. 
More boats. More yeah, you can also do the squiggly. Uh, like, never mind. Like the fish thingy. Yeah, oh. but but not a complete fish. Yeah, yeah, the fish. Yes. So it's his, it'll be like two lines and a squiggly on top. Is that what that is? Some that's congruent. That's geometry. Okay. I'm talking yeah, about this. It looks like an X, like an X with the. Yeah. I thought that was like. Oh, that is. Yeah, yeah. Like alpha or something. Like you know what's that? It is an alpha. It is an alpha. Okay. But this also means proportional to mass times volume. Volume. Yeah. Volume. 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 Like is there like a is there like a sign for not proportional? Not like really. Proportional? If it's not, not proportional, not you'd equal. never make a claim, right? Someone's, uh, someone's age and someone's oh, crap. Something basically, if something's not proportional, they're completely irrelevant to each other, right? So I, I thought something could be like you can be inversely proportional, where as one thing goes up. The other uh, thing goes yeah. down. Yeah. Yeah. That would be proportional to yeah, one true. over something. Mm. R, whatever variable. But anyway, I digress. This is our equation. This is something that you all should write down. This is momentum right here. I want you to notice this is a P. However, it's really a Greek letter rho. R-H-O. Yeah, we're calling it a P. Uh, yeah, you can. I don't like it. It's definitely P. It's definitely P. I always write momentum. I write the P as a true Greek letter. Basically, draw. I would suggest draw a P with the tail. This is the Greek letter rho. That's the true, you know, across the board, this is the most accepted variable for momentum. You can use P, that's fine. Make sure it's a lowercase. A lot of people use an uppercase P for power. What was power, by the way? Yes. We just did it. Capital P, yes. What is what's what was the equation? Remember it? It's, um, something over the work. No. Is it something over work? Close. No, it's work over... Um, You're so close. I know. Maggie, time. Work over, okay, that's what it was. Power is how, much, oh, yeah. how quickly that's can you do work. Yeah. So, yeah. you need to remember, it's a lowercase p. I suggest the Greek letter rho, a curly p. Make sure it's a lowercase. What does this arrow above the p mean? It's a, a vector. Vector, good. You need to understand momentum has a magnitude, a number, of value, but it also has a direction. The direction of your momentum is very important. Mass is not a vector. That should make sense. Your mass is just a number. You know, 20 kilograms. A kilogram with a direction doesn't make any sense. However, velocity is also a vector. The velocity can change your answer, right? If I have velocity in the positive x direction, that gives me a positive momentum. If I have the same exact velocity in the negative x direction, I have negative momentum. So this is crucial. This is our building block that we're starting with. We all have to know this. We're going to build on this. This is what momentum is. Units. You guys tell me. You, you know this. You need to tell me, what are the units of momentum? Look at your equation. You know this. Use what you know to tell me the answer. That's the mass, so it's going to be grams, right? Kilograms. Kilograms. I think a lot of you missed that on the test. We always need to go to our base units, and kilogram is our base unit for mass. So if I got kilograms here for the mass, how do we measure velocity? Meters per second squared. Meter, hmm? no, no, meters per second. Meters per second. Meters per second squared is acceleration, because that's meters per second per second. Velocity is how far you go in a certain amount of time, meters per second. So, what are the units of momentum? You just told me this was what, John? Kilograms. 
kilograms, what was velocity? So what's kilograms times meters per second? This isn't a trick question. I literally told you the answer. I love you, Okay. What are the units? Units for of this, put these two together. Like literally. Is it kilograms per second? Close. <laughs> Kilogram. Yes, Maggie's got it. Kilogram <laughs> meter per second. I'm trying to get you, to, I'm forcing you to do unit analysis. You know mass, you know velocity. You have never even heard of this before, potentially. And yet you can still tell me the units because you know the equation. This is kilograms, this is meters per second. So kilograms mass times velocity means kilograms times meters per second. So your units, kilogram meter per second, or kilogram times meter per second, they're the same thing. All right? The best way to write it, this is the, this is how I want you to think about it and write it. I was gonna say on the, okay. like on the sheet it looks like it's, the row with M over V, almost like a different formula. Yeah, yeah, that's exactly right. Density, that weird P, it's on the very bottom left of your AP equation sheet. See that weird P? Yeah. That's rho. I write it with a tail because it's really hard to do it the way you type it. Um, and it's mass divided by velocity. Wait, 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 wait. Which one did you point to me? That one. Oh, that's a different one. Okay. That's density. I apologize. Very bottom left uses the row, but that's mass divided by volume. Capital V is volume. Yep. Yeah, up above, the momentum equation will have the vector arrows. John found it. It's on the middle far left. It's an MV. That's a good point. Don't get those confused. It needs to have your vectors. And it's mass times velocity, not mass divided by capital V, which is volume. That's, I appreciate that. I made the same mistake. You guys probably wouldn't. All right? So those are your units. What was the second oh, that's a lot of damage. Um, It was just rearranging. Okay. This is how I want you to write the units. Kilogram meter per second. Um... Momentum, it's mass times velocity. How much momentum does this semi-truck have right now? Zero. Uh, that's a zero. Zero. Why? It's not, it's not, not in motion. Well, okay, well, not in motion. Know, that picture could have been taken before. It's currently in the problem. Problem. But I'm saying, like, at this moment in time, yeah. you see no velocity, right? Yeah. That's zero. It may have mass, but we actually don't care because you know automatically... Anything times zero gets zero. This semi has zero momentum. You know that literally go by your equation. You also know that intuitively. Something's sitting on a table, it does not have momentum. Right? How about this? We got a Tomahawk cruise missile being launched from an aircraft carrier. Right? Thousand kilogram mass. 100 meter per second velocity, that's moving. Down here, we got a semi. 5,000 kilogram mass, but it's only going 20 meters per second. Who has more momentum? Yeah, I mean, you can do them each individually. Momentum is mass times velocity. Mass times velocity, 100,000 kilogram meter per second. I'm done. Good night. <laughs> Down here, what's 5,000 times 20? 100,000. This missile has the same velocity. Momentum. Sorry. Momentum. momentum. Good. we got to be particular with our words. This missile has the same momentum as this semi-truck. Yes. At that, those given masses and those given velocities. So what right? is that like? If, if these hit each other... Assume the missile doesn't explode. They just collide. Who wins? Yeah. Well, I mean, Definitely the trying, the, I think just the, looking at momentum. The the, 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 think about physics. We're looking at momentum. 
Well, I think the, they're just gonna. Who wins? I think the Christmas one would win because it's got a plane and just goes through the truck. No, well, no, no. Okay. The truck that's the negative. Truck the truck is. The truck is. Negative. Negative. That's you are thinking about even more. I get your point. I like that point. Yeah, but the but if you if on. you're an ignorant scientist and the only thing you know is momentum, who wins? So we are, we are they stay exactly the same. Neither they're one. Gonna if gonna you're change. investigating the momentum of two yeah. objects, yeah. if they're yeah. equal and opposite, they cancel each other out. Yeah. Right? This could have a hundred meters per second in the positive direction. This would be a negative. So they're directly opposing each other. Mass is irrelevant, it's just a number. So you have positive 100,000, negative 100,000 goes to zero. So just according to momentum, they'd stop. They'd slide and literally stop. I feel like in reality, though, the missile would just go through it. Yes. If it didn't explode on impact. Yes. The, the, my answer is an ideal world. Say they're rigid objects and they literally can't penetrate each other. So they're literally going to hit and stop. Obviously, in real life, we know the missile would probably break the windshield, blow through the cabin. Or it depends. It depends on where it hits. Because if it hits lower and hits the engine. Yep. You can you can you can transfer momentum better, and so you would have more likely to have it be dead stop. Yeah, because if you like, that be like if you had a, I don't know, like if you had like okay the. The smart car versus the suburban, but it depends on where it hits. Because for let's say for some reason the suburban hits the um, smart car right, like a windshield above the main part of the vehicle. Yes, it's it weak. Yeah. just clear that off. That's right. <laughs> so so we're we're not going to talk about that, right? No. We idealize things in this situation. Think about this: twenty-two caliber bullet. It's a little bullet, but you shoot that bullet, and then you got a giant turtle. Let me give you some numbers. Three. No, no, you're not shooting the turtle. You're comparing the two. Who has more momentum? 0.01 kilogram bullet. 300 meter per second. I don't like that. Or. I don't like those. 100 kilogram turtle moving at 0.03. That's its total mass. Total mass. Which one has more momentum? I don't. I don't like that. Can you guys yeah. tell me for sure? Yes. No, you can. I think they eat the child, though. Let's be real. No. Like, well, if he eats the whole child, he just adds all of the mass of the child into it. Yeah. How, how do I determine the momentum? Guys, how do I determine the momentum? Multiply this two. Yep. Velocity. 300 times 0 0.01. 3. Right? Three kilogram per kilogram meter per second. Hundred is three. It's still three. Yeah. It's the same. This is something that you need to think I don't about. Like that. You, you, you <laughs> need so to go that. by the equation: mass times velocity. Very, very different scenarios, but they each have the same momentum. Think about it. If right? the bullet hits the turtle, the turtle, the bullet will stop. Okay. Okay. Pause. I, I need to get through this. All right. We'll talk about that in a sec. I need to get through this. This scenario. Which, in these two scenarios, you know the momentum of each of these. We just determined they were the same momentum. Which of these objects has a greater effect on this wall or the barrier protecting this guy? The dying turtle. Who, which, think about it carefully. We just calculated the momentum for both objects. We found that the momentum was the same, correct? Mm -hmm. So, which scenario has a greater impact or pushes the wall further? Is this still Think the same about turtle? it carefully. Yes, we just calculated. <laughs> think, you gotta think. We're talking about momentum. Just momentum. Yeah. yeah. Same, Assume but... these are rigid. A rigid wall. It completely stops both objects. Which one uh, has a greater effect? I see some shaking heads. They're the same. Really small mass. Really fast. 
has a certain amount of momentum. It moved the wall a certain amount. Really slow turtle with a massive mass moved the wall the same. Well, wait, when, when because like the way the energy is like dispersed, because it's so low, wouldn't that change? Yeah, because that's, that's what a good I was point. Thinking. That's what I was thinking is that the turtle. Yes, I feel like the turtle would push the, turtle, the, the turtle, object, but the bullet would just go through it because the uh, assume, it would be well, concentrated well, to a very specific assuming point. It, even assuming it doesn't go through, the bullet is going to hit a small part of it. Versus the turtle, the turtle, the turtle pushing the whole thing. However, I said assume the, the momentum for both objects is completely transferred into the wall. However it happens, really small area, and assume it's a rigid wall, or the turtle it's spread out, but it's still going to the same wall. You bring up an interesting point about something that we're going to talk about next class. I want to wait um, about how the energy or the momentum is distributed. That plays a role. Right now, we only know momentum. What I want you guys to do for next class, your homework is I'm, I'll assign three videos on AP Classroom. They're each like seven minutes, right? A lot of it will be review, so it'll be easy. You can play them at faster speed if you want to save time, but you need to watch those videos and try and solidify these ideas so that next class, we can take that idea and then keep going and learn something new. Aiden? What, what? Boris, okay. All right, thank you guys. Um, I will try to get your tests regraded and input. Watch those three videos. I'll assign them right now. But this is a great start, right? I love your ideas. Thank you for sharing them. I don't care right or wrong. It helps me know our starting point. Thank you, Evan. We're off to a good start. I want us to destroy this momentum unit. Like, nail it. Like, I want this to go better than energy. Right? I want us to be more prepared. It's, it's, just, it's so weird to think, like, it, it's because there's so many things you aren't adding in, but, like, it is physics because you're...